Sometimes I forget he's not a human. Move over, Brookhouse. We have a new kid on the block, Nikki Philippi. We had to put Bowser to sleep. So who is Nikki Philippi? Nikki Philippi is a lifestyle YouTuber. Uh, she's done very well, around about 1.4 million followers, and just so recently, the way I found out about her is a massive fucking bomb has dropped on the internet around this uh, YouTuber essentially euthanizing her dog uh, for what appears to be a clouty type situation. We're gonna get into that shortly. But uh, she isn't new to raising a few eyebrows in the, in the sphere of social media as she has been called out before because she did make a video when she was going to adopt a child from Thailand, I believe, and then decided not to go ahead with it because there was laws around this child appearing in her YouTube videos, so they decided to just not do it, which is kind of awful. <laughs> to talk about them or share any images, photos, videos, anything about them online for a year. Yeah, and that... So... I mean... But, anywho, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about what she did to her dog, so stay tuned. Bit of a backstory on the schmozzle of a video that we're going to go down this rabbit hole of, uh, quickly. So, this couple got their nine-year-old bull terrier euthanized because of a misunderstanding Bowser, the bull terrier, had with their small child, who is of toddler age. Now, they do openly admit through this entire video that they failed Bowser from the very get-go. He got attacked as a puppy, become reactive, and this obviously just snowballed all the way up until nine years old, till the end of his life. Um, now, later on in Bowser's life, the, the, the couple here, Nikki and Dan, have a child. Now, there's a little bit of adjustment for Bowser, which he's pretty sweet with, and they admit that too. He was a good dog. But for some reason, this couple, once the child become of toddler age, and toddler, you know, terrible twos, um, they openly admit to their toddler just terrorizing Bowser. Um, no matter where Bowser was, this toddler would just terrorize him. And weirdly enough, they don't take responsibility for the toddler's actions, uh, nor do they take responsibility for Bowser's actions. The toddler terrorizing Bowser starts off with them admitting to the toddler essentially getting Bowser one day and yanking on his ears so bad that he gave the dog cauliflower ears. Now, this isn't the kid's fault. The kid's a kid, right? He doesn't know the difference from right or wrong. Um, you know, they're super lucky that Bowser didn't do anything. You know, a nine-year-old bull terrier could, could do something if he wanted to, right? But he didn't. Um, anyway, another incident happened later on where this kid again was terrorizing Bowser. This time it was over food. This young kid tried to take Bowser's food off him. Bowser turned around, nipped him on the face. The parents admit that the nip on the face only left a small mark and it wasn't that bad. So with this whole schmozzle, right, one would think that, hmm, wouldn't, okay, time to rehome the dog. And that's what they claim that they tried to do. But in their version of the truth, they state that all these professionals said that Bowser's is a lost cause and you need to euthanize the dog. And that's essentially what they did. We we're gonna be upset. And Dan's response was, oh, that was a bird. Dan's response was, nobody's going to be as upset as I'm upset, or as upset as I am. <laughs> well, I mean, We've had Bowser for over, almost a decade, and um, he's, uh, he, <laughs> for those of you who know him or have been around him, he's, he's an angel, but you know, he likes to get rowdy, and that's part of the reason why I liked him. Uh, you know, one of the things that I liked about him, but, um, you know, for many, many years, for most of his life, he was, he, an extremely dangerous animal outside the walls of my house. So he was definitely an outside animal that I had to keep inside. Well, and so, Bowser was attacked when he was a puppy and we never really talked about that very much, but that was like a, that was a big turning point in Bowser's personality. So prior to the attack, <clears throat> Bowser could go to dog parks. Bowser was just calmer in general. And then after the attack, 
it just triggered something in him and he was attacked by another bull terrier actually my parents old bull terrier um but it's 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 something that can happen with the breed and so ever since then things really took a turn any dog can attack a dog in a park like dude it's not a bull terrier specific thing these people failed bowser from day one um bowser was attacked this problem wasn't addressed obviously and he's now Quote, he's a dangerous dog that can't be let off the property. These people failed him from day one. And the crazy thing is, they had nine years to figure this shit out. Nine years, man. I thought this was common sense. Like I say, if Lucy gets attacked by another German Shepherd, and I'd be like, shit, okay, that's not good. She's probably gonna be reactive now. Now this is something I'm gonna have to work on if a particular behavioral trait starts happening moving forward. Like the first thing I think about is, oh, trainer, if I don't know, get a trainer, hire a trainer. These people are like rich YouTubers making multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. They can afford this shit, man. Well, I mean, I don't need to get, I mean, there's been multiple instances, um, but, um, you know, we could have, we could have put Bowser down uh, a really, really long time ago, uh, and several times, and uh, I've just been putting the day off. Because you don't want to um, make that decision. That's the thing. Yes, you love an animal, you don't want to make that decision. Here they literally, they literally admit to, like, there's been multiple instances. In my mind, there shouldn't be multiple instances. But even, let's, let's be, let's be optimistic and say, They've had multiple opportunities to work on these things and they still didn't. This is, this is insane, man. This is insane. Yes, he's he's uh, seriously injured a couple of different dogs, um, including Zoe, who's standing right here. I've had her stitched up a couple times. Now, I wonder why Bowser become reactive to Zoe. Let me show you a video. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? Once Logan got to the point of being able to crawl around and, and run around by himself, you know, he's really grabby too. He, uh, he, he grabbed onto Bowser's ear and Bowser didn't do anything, you know, he's, he's that calm gentle giant that lives in my house but you know logan got him so good that um if you know what uh an mma fighter looks like or a wrestler they have that cauliflower ear just balloons up that's what happened to bowser's ear uh, you might have caught a couple glimpses of it in a couple videos but um it fully ballooned up and it took now this part blows my mind so Look, the biggest elephant in the room here, in my opinion, is why don't you have control of your child? Like, why would you let, I'm not even worried about Bowser here. Dude, I'm, I'm genuinely concerned for the safety of your kid. Like, I'm not a dad, so I can't 100%, you know, put my own two cents in from being a dad. But just from common sense, if I was responsible for a small human being, I'm not going to let it terrorize a dog that you have labeled a dangerous dog. Like, fuck man, guys. Now, let's talk about what this little kid did to Bowser. They're so lucky that Bowser didn't turn around and just go whack. Like, so lucky, man. Giving a dog a cauliflower ear, that would probably hurt. It seriously would hurt. So, I think it's a testament to Bowser's actually relatively calm and good nature that he just walked away. So, I think from that instance, you can kind of start to make uh, an observation around Bowser that, man, this was a relatively good dog considering the environment this dog's in. You know, hey, just, there was one incident that happened 
Bowser got Logan in the face. And it actually happened 20 minutes before we were supposed to leave to the airport mm -hmm. to go visit her parents. So um, obviously it, it wasn't bad, but Logan still is- um, Has a little mark. He's still healing up from a little mark on his face from Bowser's little, we call him his dolphin tooth. Uh, so. And it, and it happened in a way that like, I mean, it almost, it almost doesn't matter because the end result was the same, but in the spirit of telling the story, it wasn't like Bowser attacked Logan. Just like you said, it was like, they- Defensive. Yeah, they, Logan tried to take food from him. Oh, sorry to close the window. Yeah, it happened in a moment where Logan stole food from him and you know, really got in the mix. Like that lady said, you're always waiting for the worst, the worst thing right. to happen. And eventually it's like, is it going to get to a point to where, um, someone else has to put him down or I'm forced to do it because of something that horrible happened. I think the lady meant to say, you're always waiting for two idiots to let the worst thing happen. Not, you're always waiting for the worst thing to happen. Now, I think what happened here is essentially what led Bowser to be euthanized, um, or was the, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. So what Bowser did is completely unacceptable. Like, you can't have your dog being reactive around food if there's a small toddler roaming free willy-nilly around the house doing whatever it wants. But if you do have a reactive dog, and possibly this reactivity can't be untrained, you know, you need to have the dog being fed in a place where the toddler can't get it, and you need to have eyes on the kid, man. This video is turning into a freaking how to look after your kid for dummies video, right? Like, I'm, I have never even looked after a kid, yet I can figure this out. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know. Do you just let your kid roam around and steal food from a, a dangerous dog's bowl? Yeah, well, a cup, can I, sorry, yeah. you look like you're about to say why in something. No, go ahead. I was gonna say uh, two things. One, so, I mean, geez, I have so many thoughts around this. As you guys know, we're getting ready to move and um, <clears throat> we haven't said where, so if you're like, where are you moving? It's because we haven't said it yet. But, you know, we weren't sure what was gonna happen with Bowser because every time we move with Bowser, it is hard because he is basic, he's special needs. Like, Let's be real here, this couple are special needs. The comment, waiting for the next bite. We actually attempted to rehome Bowser because like we said, we know that, I mean, he, he's our little like clown, he was our clown angel. Like, I, I don't, it's, sorry if I'm awkward, it's just finding the words are really awkward because it's, you know, emotional. And we, we contacted the Humane Society and we had a long discussion with someone over there and basically she made it clear to us that rehoming Bowser was not an option because he had been with us from birth, basically. I mean, Dan was his, he was Dan's spirit animal. Dan was his spirit human, you know? So they were bonded. Who the fuck is this person from the Humane Society saying absolutely no way in hell you can't rehome this dog? There are, there are numerous of old dogs get rehomed. Hell, we have an organization in Australia called Seniors for Seniors, where they pair up old dogs once a dog becomes a senior around seven, eight years old, and the family doesn't want it anymore. Unfortunately, that's sad and it sucks, but it happens. And they pair these dogs up with old, like you have to be 65 years old, like 65 years old and older. And you're, you're essentially a senior person, you know, slowing down in life and you may want some company, getting paired up with a senior dog. They don't need as much exercise anymore. It's a great freaking pair, right? Like, dude, there are literally things in Australia that only cater for rehoming senior dogs so they don't get left out. That's the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. You know, even, even rehoming, apparently, from what we're gathering now, when you rehome a dog, it's still like your liability if the dog were to attack someone. Um, so it doesn't just, you don't just give the liability, apparently, to the next owner, supposedly. Maybe that's a state-by-state -state thing. And basically... And he can't uh, even get out the front door. He otherwise. can't even, no, we're always like, quick, close the garage, like... 
That's absolutely bullshit. And here's why. Now I'm 99% sure that I have the correct answer to this. Now I got some help from the Melongator Mum on that topic. Now I just wanna give a shout out, one of my most favorite people on YouTube, uh, the Melongator Mum, make sure you subscribe to her channel. She is my inspiration. Uh, she is a kick-ass mum for starters, epic mum. Uh, and she is also a, an amazing dog handler of four Belgian Melonoirs, uh, which for those who don't know, Belgian Mel's are the most intense psycho dogs on planet Earth. You have to be a special human being to just own one of them. Kay has four of them, which is crazy, and uh, two of which are highly trained protection dogs for her family. So like that is goals. One day I would love to own a Mel as well and have a protection dog uh, here in Sydney. That may happen one day, I've expressed that in the past. But anyway guys, side note, subscribe to her channel. She's amazing, you'll learn a lot. If they were to give Bowser to a temporary foster home, yes, she is correct, they would still be responsible for Bowser's actions. But in their state, if they were to surrender Bowser completely with paperwork saying they surrender Bowser 100% and that dog has new ownership, that is now the new owner's responsibility. So it's very misleading what she's saying there. She's kind of using the whole fostering thing as an excuse, potentially, or maybe she got absolutely terrible fucking advice from the Humane Society. So the guy that came over to help us with Bowser's passing, to put Bowser down, he's from Australia, and that was one of the first things he said when he got there, was he was like, whoa, these are the dogs that are used to hunt hogs because they're so strong. And oh, it's bloody insulting. It's bloody insulting. He's like, you're so lucky that this didn't result in anything worse. And that was what the woman on the phone had said. She, we kind of relayed to her all of the instances where Bowser had shown aggression and we were scared. And by the end, she was like, it sounds like you're just waiting for Bowser's worst attack to happen. And he's right in saying, you are so lucky that this didn't result in anything worse. I think we've established that and addressed this through other parts of this video, but you are so lucky. You are oh so lucky that Bowser was a good dog. Considering the shitty upbringing he had, you were so lucky he didn't turn around and go to town on your kid. And you may have be in a, in a much worse position than now. Oh, now we're gonna have to put Bowser down. I just thought, oh, he's just gotta be in the right home. But after, you know, getting counsel from multiple professionals who are with dogs all the time, all of them said that they all said the same thing. Um, well, nobody knows how to take Bowser for me. Who the fuck are all these people saying they all said that this dog has to be put down? Like all of these professionals. Are you kidding me, man? You're taking the piss, aren't you? There's no way. There's no way in hell. Give us some evidence. Name these people. You guys are fucked. Like you, 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 you've been strung out too dry. So if this is really the guidance that you got, it's probably not the right guidance, man. Like, who are these people? Name them, show them. Get them out there. Who said? Name every single person. Jan, Murray, David, Fred, from the fucking Humane Society, and all these other people, all of these people said, put this dog down. Where are they? Who are they? Give us some names. Bowser wouldn't, you know, Bowser wasn't gonna go out of his way to aggress on Logan, so everything was fine. Like. But once he got older and he could move and he got feistier, it was it was Logan in Bowser's space. And Logan yeah. couldn't help but grab at him and try to steal things from him and try to interrupt him when he was eating or scream at him. And so it was almost kind of unfair to Bowser because it was like, he's a good dog-ish. And then we told you we had mourned him years ago thinking he was gonna have to go because of those things, but he wasn't doing really anything to Logan. But the problem was once Logan got older and once Bowser crossed that line, I mean, I don't even well, feel like I can explain it. You Bowser's it. new routine is, you know, he's got his normal <laughs> corner and he's taking a rest. If Bowser's in the mood and his attention is on him, he'll walk over to Bowser and Bowser doesn't want to get grabbed on, so he knows he has to get up and move. Parenting advice again. Look, I'm just gonna throw out there. There are more things in the house than a dog that can hurt a child that doesn't know what the hell they're doing, right? Dude, you've got PowerPoints, and you've got objects, you've got sharp objects, you've got all sorts of shit around the house, man. You shouldn't be letting your kid just roam bloody free willy 
doing whatever the bloody hell he wants around the house. For an example here, guys, like my wife and I, we're gonna have kids one day, right? I'm not at all going to let my child harass Lucy. Now, Lucy's good with kids. She doesn't live with kids, but she's good with kids outside. Yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be some room and I'm sure we're gonna to have to make a few arrangements and we're gonna to have to do some training. I, I absolutely do not deny that fact. But there's no way in hell I'm gonna let my kid terrorize my dog. Because like, yeah, I don't want Lucy to bite my kid. Absolutely not, I'm not gonna endanger my kid. But I'm also not gonna set my fucking dog up to fail, man. I love my dog. I love my dog more than just about fucking anything. All right, I love my dog just as much as I love my kid. You know, I'm not gonna set her up to fail. And when that time comes, guys, I'm gonna make a fuckload of YouTube content about that so we can all see it can be done, right? There's a lot of people out there with great dogs who have kids. Because Bowser could come over to Logan with a wagging tail. Yeah, yeah, Logan's play with not him. grabbing at him and Bowser's licking the food that's on his face, you know? Yeah, things just became more complicated than this mid, this mid phase of like, he's not a baby baby, but he's not old enough to know better how to control himself really. And so that just made Bowser really unpredictable. And thinking that like, God willing, we have more children, well then it's gonna start all over again. And then who knows what kind of chaos is gonna be there with two kids. Combined with the fact that Bowser is older, combined with the fact that he already got physical on Logan, combined with the fact that he's done this before. Ah, oh, guys, you are old enough to know better. How old are you? You're like fucking 35. Why is your kid just doing whatever he wants, man? He can't think for himself yet. Like, I don't know if you figured that out yet, but dude, seriously, come on. My question is, what happens when he starts on Zoe? Dude, little, little dogs. Man, I can 100% tell you with a thousand percent certainty. Little dogs are more reactive than big dogs, man. Legit. What happens when your kid comes along and starts pulling Zoe's tail and stuff? Because you let him. He's gonna turn around and go whack! Bang! That's what's gonna happen, he's gonna get nipped. What are you gonna do? Go put her down too? Shit, man, like, come on. Come on, guys. Let's be adults. It happened on Friday and we woke up and had a a really great day with him. You know, he was fed really good food, taken on a really beautiful outdoor drive. The weather, unlike today, was perfect. It was so beautiful. We played with Bowser in the back and soaked up the sun and just relaxed with him. And um, like I mentioned, we did it at our house. So we paid for, for the anesthesiologist um, person to come over. And it was good that we got to do it there. Um, he had had another dog of his in the past that had to be put down because of illness and age and you know, had to do it the more traditional way at the facility. And we were just like, we can't, we couldn't do that. So just ugh, when she talks about what a beautiful day Bowser's last day was. Now, in my opinion, that's all well and good. That's great. They gave him a great last day. That's the last day he should have had if they were getting him put down for something like if he had cancer and, he, and, he, and his quality of life was completely stripped from him. That's what you should do. Man, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube and it, they're, they're real tear jerkers. They're real tear jerkers, man. Like that's, that's what, if something ever happens to Lucy and her quality of life is completely stripped from her, it's something, and it's bad, you know, and we have to go down that route, like we'll do it will absolutely do it, but it has to be that bad. It has to be, it's something as tragic as cancer that strips the life from her and it's inhumane to keep her going because she'll want to keep going. And if she can't do the things she can't, well then like, you know, that's, that's a decision we'll make. And we'll give her, that's when you give your dog that day. Every day should be like that really, shouldn't they? But like, it'll be extra special, right? Like, I get it, man, I get it. If you have to put your dog down for those reasons, give your dog the best last day on goddamn earth. But man, this dog didn't have to be put down. It's as simple as fucking that. You sound like you were gonna say something. No. It was just the worst day. It was the worst day. It was, it was amazing because, you know, everything comes to an end. And if you're gonna have, you know, if you have to have an end, which everything does, it was a, it was a beautiful, perfect ending in our living room, in our arms, um, calm. You know, he only had one moment of tension, which is when he first, you know, used the needle on him. He, had, he freaked out a little bit, but then he calmed right down and we were able 
to hug him and kiss him and hold him and thank him, you know? And that was a lot of like my time. So your time with Bowser was a lot of like fun things, feeding him and driving him around and hugging him and playing with him. My time with Bowser, I just spent time hugging him and it was kind of a combination of like telling him how I felt and how grateful I was to him for all those years combined with kind of like prayer to God and thanking God, you know, for, for giving us this time with him. This bit just here, I literally, I threw up listening to it. I think the Bull Terrier is my favorite animal, period. Oh. I want to say one more thing actually before we go. Where's my phone? I wrote a list of things that I'll never forget about Bowser that I was going to put in my Instagram post, but I'm not. I just want to read it here really quick. Alrighty guys, and there's enough verbal diarrhea for one day. Um, cut a long story short here, what is crazy, and I tried to get the photos off Instagram for you to have a look at, but it's all locked up because someone's probably getting a lot of hate mail at the moment. Um, but, so on their last beautiful last day, as stated, they actually did an Instagram photo shoot and they did this, this it's weird, right? It creeps me out a little bit. They did this photo shoot with Bowser in the backyard and little behold, they've got these photos of their kid sitting alone next to this dog and, you know, just after the whole incident, like, this kid would take a second to grab a Bowser again. And anyway, you know, who am I to give parenting advice though? Fuck it, what a day. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, drop a subscribe. Guys, comment your thoughts below on this whole situation. Um, are people being too harsh on them? Um, did they fail Bowser? Are they failing being parents? I don't know. Love someone else's advice, opinion on this. Drop them down below. Love to hear it. Let's get those comments. Let's turn it into a bit of a shitstorm down there. And we'll see you all in the next video.